In this video we're going to look at simplifying a cubed root that has um, not only a number underneath the cubed root but also some variables. Alright, so let's dive in and see what we can do here. Um, when you're looking at this, you want to remember the rule that if you have a root of two things that are multiplied together, that's the same as the root of the first one times the root of the second one. And where this helps us here is basically it's just telling us that we can look at each of these individually. We can ask ourselves, what's the cubed root of negative 81? Think about that. What is the cubed root of x to the seventh? What is the cubed root of y to the eighth? And, and approach these separately and then sort of put them all together for our answer. All right, so let's first think about what the cubed root of negative 81 would be. Um, if you have a cubed root, you're trying to find a factor of 81 that is a perfect cube or something to the third power. So it might help to list out your, your perfect cube numbers. Of course, 1 cubed is 1, which really doesn't help us, so we don't really use that one because you factor out a 1 and nothing happens. Um, 2 to the third power is 8, and 8 does not go into 81, so that doesn't help us. 3 to the third power is 27, and 27 does go into 81 three times. So we can take this and split it up. We can, now we have a negative there, and um, it doesn't really matter so much what we do with the negative. We probably want to take the negative out. Let's, let's talk about that just a sec before we break down this. Well, let me write the 27 and the 3, and then we'll talk about what to do with the negative. So there's the 27 and the 3. Now the negative, remember, negative 1 to the third power would be negative 1. So I could take out a negative 1. I could think of this as negative 1 times um, 27 times 3, or I could think of negative 3 to the third power is negative 27. So I could put the negative on my 27, and then when I take the cubed root of negative 27, that would give me negative 3. Um, Probably some of you are looking at this and thinking, I thought I couldn't take the root of a negative. And what you're thinking about is square roots. When you have a square root, you cannot take the square root of a negative because nothing times itself is a negative number. And probably most of the examples and problems you've done have been square roots. And then all of a sudden they throw cubed roots in there. And cubed roots, you can take the cubed root of a negative number. Um, <clears throat> for example, if you had the cubed root of negative 8 that would be negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. Three negatives multiplied together can give a negative, but when you're doing a square root, two negatives is a positive and two positives is a positive. So it's always going to be positive when you're doing a square root. All right, so back here we have the cubed root of negative 27 times 3 so I, I can take the cubed root of negative 27 and that's so I can bring that out the cubed root of negative 27 is negative 3 and then the other 3 is going to stay in there under the cubed root okay that's as much as we can do with that now with these variable ones let me erase this we'll talk about variables when you're taking the cubed root of a variable the shortcut is basically to divide the exponent by the index and ask yourself how many times does 3 go into 7 and the answer is twice. Now here's why. Because the cubed root of x to the third is x. What times itself 3 times gives you x to the third? That's x. The cubed root of x to the third is x because x times x times x is x to the third. Remember, cubed root is asking you what times itself three times, or what to the third power is x to the third? What to the third power is x to the third? Well, that's x. All right, what to the third power is x to the sixth? What to the third power would give you x to the sixth? That would be x squared. x squared times x squared times x squared because you add these exponents you get 6. So you see what what you're doing here to simplify this is you can just take the 6 divided by the 3 and that gives you 2 and that will always work. So if I look at this x to the 7th I could split this x to the 7th up into x to the 6th times x. Then the x to the 6th can come out because it's divisible by 3 
and that gives me x to the second, and then I still have the x underneath the cubed root. This x right here still stays. All right, y to the eighth. I have to split that up again into y to the sixth and y to the second, because six plus two is eight. Then I can take the cubed root of y to the sixth, and that comes out, and that gives me y to the second, and then this y to the second is still trapped in there. Now this is just a coincidence in this problem that I could, that when the y to the sixth came out it became a y to the second and also there was a y to second left inside. With the x's, when I, um, when, notice with the x's when I took the cubed root of x to the sixth it came out x squared but I only had an x left inside. So, you know, it just depends what your exponent is when you start. So if I put this all together, what I have on the outside of the radical is a negative 3, an x squared, and a y squared. And what I have inside the radical under the cubed root is a 3, an x, and a y squared. So I kind of put it all back together and that's it. That's the answer. So this is one way to do it right here is to break it up into each individual um, thing that you're multiplying together, the negative 81 the x to the 7th and the y to the 8th, and just look at those separately and then put it all back together at the end. Um, if you're comfortable with what's going on, you could keep it all together and write it like this over here. You could say, well, what's a perfect cube that goes into 81? That's negative 27. So then I'd have to times that by 3 to give me my 81. Then my x to the 7th, I want to split that up into a multiple of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. So what is the greatest multiple of 3 that's um, less than 7, that would be 6. So I could split the x to the 7th into the x to the 6th and x. And then the same thing with the y. 3, 6, 9, the greatest multiple before I go over 8 would be 6. And then that would leave me a y squared to make up my y to the 8th. And then I would look at what I did here and I'm going to underline what I can take out. What are my perfect cubes? So my, perf my perfect cubes are negative 27, x to the 6th, and y to the 6th. So those are the guys that I can take the cubed root of, and they're going to come outside the cubed root. So I'm going to take the cubed root of them, and they're going to come out. So what's the cubed root of negative 27? That's negative 3. What's the cubed root of x to the 6th? x squared. What's the cubed root of y to the 6th? y squared. All right, so what do I have left underneath my cubed root that wasn't a perfect cube, so it didn't get to come out? I have this, let me underline those in uh, purple. This 3 is left in there, that x is left in there, and that y squared is left inside the radical. So 3x y squared. Let me get rid of this right here just so we can see what we've done. So either way you do it, one way is to break it up into the parts and do them individually and put it back together. And if, you're, if this feels like too much, you might want to break it down into smaller parts. That's a good way to approach a math, math problem if it seems too big, is to break it down into smaller problems that you can handle. But once you get the feel of it, you can kind of keep them all together and break them down sort of under the same radical and then um, just write your answer that way. Notice these two answers are the same. So either way you do it, you should come up with the right answer.